Hello everybody, it's Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com and I'm the creator of the GPR Basics online certification course uh, for ground penetrating radar professionals. So today I am going to bring you another video about three things, three benefits of using time slices uh, for GPR. Okay, three benefits of time slices. Three benefits of time slices, all right, for GPR. Uh, it's important, you know, before we even get into the three benefits, I'm going to quickly take a second, which is a caution about using time slices. I have met a number of people who only use time slices. They don't even look at the profiles. They don't even look at the two-dimensional view, right, into the surface, subsurface, the actual profile view. Uh, they don't even look at them, right? They just create time slices, that's what they go by, and that's, I'm cautioning you not to do that, okay? The profiles are your actual data. The time slices are interpolations of multiple profiles and what the subsurface looks like from a top-down horizontal perspective, but do not discount the benefits and power of two-dimensional profiles. Now, I'm gonna give you some issues throughout this. Sometimes I come up with 2D profiles, but it doesn't mean that that's not your primary data, right? Those are your primary data. This is interpolation of those. Uh, so it's caution, don't just rely on time slices. Use multiple forms, right? 1D, 2D, and 3D data in order to understand what's going on below the ground surface. So let's begin. Number one, a benefit of time slices is that you can trace linear <coughs> features. Now you can trace linear features. So for example, um, you know, if you're looking at it in a profile view, okay, you know, and, and, and um, you know, so x equals one, maybe you see the hyperbola there, right? x equals two, maybe you see it here, x equals three, right? You see it over here, and then maybe x equals four, and you see something over here. Is that part of the same group? It's hard to tell sometimes in a profile, right? This is your ground surface, okay, ground surface. It's hard to tell, all right, right? So you have, right, x equals one, x equals two, x equals three, x equals four. As different profiles, it can be difficult to tell. So what does it look like when you go top down? Well, the reason why that might be difficult looking side by side is because you get a bend in your pipe, you get a bend in your linear feature. But if you look at it top down instead, right, and so here's your pipe, and it goes that direction, x equals one, x equals two, x equals three, right, x equals, I'm gonna change this a little bit, okay, x equals four, right, what happens? By looking at it top down, you can see that those are part of the same feature. So time slices can help trace linear features that can be difficult to reconcile in profile view. Okay? So time slices can be very helpful uh, in this circumstance. Number two, right? Number two, they help on congested sites. Time slices can help you evaluate what's going on below the surface on congested sites. There's many utilities crisscrossing each other. There's many you know, pipes and utilities under the, the surface, a lot of uh, uh, burials or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> but on congested sites, it can be difficult sometimes to delineate specific targets. And so in a profile view, right, here's the ground surface, ground surface. Right? You may have a hyperbola, right? hyperbola, hyperbola, a hyperbola here, maybe one over here, you know, another one here. Right? What's going on? Right? What's going on? Okay? Are both of these utilities, are they not utilities? Um, you know, it can be very, very difficult. Let's say in the next profile over, you still see something over here and you don't see one over here. Does that mean that this is a utility? Maybe, but how do you know it's not a rock there and it's just this one that's, you know, on a bend 
is hard to tell sometimes. So on congested sites, it can be very difficult to interpret um, profile data. Right? But instead, when you're looking at time slices, so here's a top-down view, right? you might see this way, okay, right, maybe this one goes off in that direction, okay, uh, uh, whatever the case may be, so, you know, maybe this one's here. On congested sites, it's sometimes easier to interpret when you're looking top down, especially if you migrate the data properly, it can be easier sometimes to make interpretations of what's below the surface on congested sites. So I highly recommend using time slices on congested sites, because and it could be rebar, right, and conduits, it can be pipes and utilities, whatever the case may be. On congested sites, time slices can be very, very helpful. All right, number three, third benefit, is identifying low amplitude reflections. Okay, low amplitude reflections. So what's a low amplitude reflection? Well, let's start with what a high amplitude reflection is. Right, a high amplitude reflection is when you're going through sand and you hit a metal pipe. That creates a high amplitude reflection. What's a low amplitude reflection? A low amplitude reflection is, you know, you have, here's a profile, profile view. Here's the ground surface, right? Okay, ground surface. Here is the, right? Um, it's the pavement, soil, interface, okay? And here is a trench, right, with a pipe in it at the bottom. What's going to happen here, right? This soil is less than solid, so what you might have here is a reflection, but it's going to be a lower amplitude, right, low amplitude, and this will be a high amplitude. So low amplitude reflections can be difficult sometimes to see in profile view with GPR data. Okay, sometimes it's obscure. You might get something like this, and it's difficult to tell. It could be there's a low amplitude, right? So let's say it's not uh, a pavement soil interface, but you know the trench is right at the ground surface. Your ground surface reflection could be hard to tell where that trench is. So what might you do? You might do a background filter. So what is that going to happen? What's going to be the result? Goodbye ground surface. Goodbye ground surface, where's your trench? You can't tell. It's impossible to tell. Okay, it's impossible to tell. So in this circumstance, sometimes using a time slice can help you interpret low amplitude reflections. So here is your time slice. It's a top-down view, right? Top-down horizontal map. These are sometimes called depth slices. There's sometimes called amplitude maps, time slices, whatever. They're top-down views. So what you might have is high amplitude reflection. So let's say that this is, you know, um, eight nanoseconds, okay, right, in two-way travel time. At the bottom, right, and that's, let's say, the pavement soil interface. You're going to get a high amplitude reflection. But if there is a trench at some point, you're going to get a low amplitude reflection where that trench is. Right? And so you'll be able to identify right, where these trenches are using time slices as opposed to a profile. So identifying low amplitude reflections in time slice views can sometimes be easier to see than they can be in a two-dimensional profile. So three benefits of time slices. Be cautious not to rely on time slices. Be cautious not to use them because they sometimes are prettier. And use them when they're appropriate. And in these three cases, tracing linear features, especially that might be bending, is appropriate. Using them on congested sites can be a big, big help. Uh, and then using them to identify low amplitude reflections can be a help. Furthermore, you might not be able to see the bottom of the trench or your pipe, and so seeing you know eight nanoseconds of two-way travel time without a signal you know, with the signal not being attenuated yet could help you see it if you can't see it in the profile view. 
So three benefits. I hope that this was helpful. Leave a comment below of uh, another benefit, right? another way that you can use time slices to enhance your project. I would love to hear your comments. Leave a comment below this video. If you found this valuable, helpful, useful, please like the video and share it with somebody. And make sure to subscribe to our channel. We've got a ton of good stuff in store for you for 2017. And uh, I want you to be able to get notified every single week when we come out with a new video. So thank you as always. I appreciate the attention and I will see you soon.